Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the impact of the recent patch on civilization balance and talk about the biggest winners and losers. This doesn't have to be entirely opinion based, as we already have some early stats out from the first week or so since the patch went live, though it's obviously with a very small sample size at this point. Even if we can't completely trust the stats, they at least make for an interesting conversation starting point and give us a sense of what's been happening so far for the average player. Now, I aimed for a top 5 winners and losers, but it was a big patch after all, and a lot of civs received changes, so I couldn't get this down to any less than a top and bottom 8. To get things rolling, we'll start with the number 8 loser of the patch, which was the Vietnamese, Italians, and Koreans as a group, especially on 1v1 open maps. This might sound strange given Italians have no changes and Vietnamese and Koreans were technically slightly buffed, but in this case, it's not that any of them got worse, so much as they're just three civs that have been struggling for a while and missed yet another opportunity to receive something substantial. Obviously, there's always going to be a few lowest performing civs on land maps, but it just feels like we've seen these three in particular for a while. Moving on to winner number eight, I'm gonna again cheat a bit and give this one to infantry in general. The obvious one is the Swordsman line now getting the new tech Gambazins and faster upgrade times, but quite a few infantry unique units had changes snuck in at the last moment. Aztec's Jaguar Warriors gained a bit of Pierce Armor, the cost of the Samurai and Teutonic Knight was dropped by 10 resources, World Raider attack and HP was increased, Gebetto's got more HP, Shotel's got more resistance to mounted units, and Berserk's had their base healing rate doubled. Even Pikemen had their upgrade costs reduced. So aside from a couple of examples we'll see later, if you were an infantry unit going into the patch, you probably came out feeling reasonably good about things, and several infantry civs will be appearing on this list. Next up for loser number 7, we have the Sicilians. While the stats suggest they've barely changed, I mostly want to mention them because I didn't think it was clear initially if they got a nerf or a buff, with all things considered. You can see they had a lot of changes, but at least so far they seem to have settled as either unchanged or slightly worse. Working against them is that the first crusade tech seems a little weaker than before, with fewer units given now even if sergeants are individually a bit stronger. Castles being built slower now also softens what was a very effective bonus, making their signature surprise castle drops hard to stop. On the flip side, there were several changes that seemed to improve the dungeon, and maybe players just need more time to figure out how to incorporate those things more effectively. For what it's worth, the Sicilian's play rate just about doubled on this new patch, so players are obviously keen to try them out and think there might be something there, even if the results don't show it yet. Moving on, our winner number 7 is the Vikings. I just made a video talking about them and their improvements, and we don't have to restate all of those points. But the two biggest ones are first that our blesters now pick up a final plus one attack from a unique tech, basically making up for lacking thumb ring, and the berserk is now better than ever with double the base healing rate. The stats don't show anything dramatic happening so far, but their recent changes help to address some of their late game issues, and we now see them performing at least above average in particularly long games, which was previously when they tended to struggle. Moving on to the next, for loser number 6, I'm going to stretch the rules again and combine two, this time with Mayans and Aztecs. Both were hovering just under a 50% win rate on Arabia heading into the patch if we include all ELO players, but have since both fallen to below average. Assuming this isn't just random noise, there could be two possible reasons for this. The first is Eagle Warriors were made a bit more expensive, and while it's just 5 food per unit, being easy on your farming eco is really one of the big advantages of Eagles, and this takes away a bit from that. The other issue is the recent buffs to Long Swordsmen, making them more popular at the moment, which are one of the only hard counters to Eagles in Castle Age. If you're wondering where Incas are and why they aren't grouped in here as well, they're elsewhere on the list, and don't worry, we'll get to them. Moving on, for winner number 6, we have the Ethiopians. Their performance is basically the same so far this patch on Arabia, though again it's a small sample size and players are still figuring out the changes. Their unique tech Royal Heirs was nicely buffed though, and I think long term they became a lot more well rounded with this patch, with Shotels and Camels better options against Cavalry Archers in particular. Obviously, they're still a crossbow civ at heart, and those units won't come into play every game, so I don't consider them one of the biggest winners, but placing them at number 6 seems appropriate. Next up, for loser number 5, we have the Berbers. Their only change was dropping their 10% faster villager movement bonus to 5% in Dark Age, which sounds pretty modest, but so far this has somehow dropped them from number 1 on Arabia last patch to out of the top 5. 
Across all maps at the moment, we also see a big drop this patch. And personally, I'm curious if they end up bouncing back to the top spot, or if just that one small change in Dark Age has kicked them out of the top three on the ladder for good. Moving on to winner number five, we have the Goths. Their change was a new Dark Age bonus, giving them 20% longer lasting hunt, meaning they get more food out of deer and boar. Staying on those food sources for longer lets you push back when you're using your sheep, and by extension delays your farms, on top of just collecting a bit of extra food. Their win rate on Arabia is already up this patch, but I suspect the best ways to make use of this advantage, whether that be men at arms or scouts, will still get figured out even more over time. Next up, our loser number four is Thicker Jars. They had a couple of nerfs to the Shravamsha Rider's cost and attack rate, while their very good Castle Age unique tech was made more expensive to research. The result so far is that Grajars, who were 5th on Arabia heading into this, have fallen to 11th so far. Basically, the nerfs just seem to be doing what was hoped for, knocking them down a few spots on open maps, while actually leaving them unchanged, at least stats-wise, on closed maps. Moving on to winner number 4, it's the Dravidians. They received a brand new Siege discount bonus, their unique tech medical core effect was increased, and there were also some small general elephant archer buffs. The 1v1 ranked pool at the moment seems to be favoring closed maps and a couple of water maps, which is probably helping out Dravidian so far, nearly entering the top 10 this week if you include all the current maps, though they're definitely not top 10 on Arabia, which is of course the most popular map. Impressively on Arabia though, post-patch they went from being the 7th worst performer to basically average, which for Dravidians is a big success and a long way they've come in the last few months if it keeps up. It seems they're now a nicely rounded civilization, and continue to be, I think, one of the best choices on water maps as well. Entering the top 3 now, we'll start with the number 3 loser, which is the Spanish, specifically on the map Nomad. Now Nomad isn't in the 1v1 map pool at the moment, so we can't know for sure yet, but I suspect they're no longer going to be the hands down number 1. If you aren't aware of the previous situation, they were totally dominating Nomad thanks to an amazing start with faster town center builders and a fast castle into the Conquistador. The new patch took away their faster builders bonus until after the first town center is up, so you lose what was basically an extra villager advantage, while also having the Conquistador strategy nerfed a bit with lower pierce armor on that unit. That said, on Arabia specifically, they seem to have actually improved a bit thanks to their new extra gold bonus, but their days of complete domination on Nomad, I suspect, are probably over for good. I could be wrong and underestimating the new gold bonus on that map, but we'll see. Moving on to our winner number 3, we have the Malay. This one's notable not because they're a top civilization, but because the new patch finally brought them out of the very bottom tier, where it seems they've been stuck for years. The new patch gave them free infantry armor upgrades, leading to a stronger man at arms opening, making them much more distracting and annoying to deal with as Malay can transition to archers. Likewise, their defensive spearmen automatically take three more attacks from scouts, helping against some of their worst matchups, which were aggressive cavalry sifts. Of course, automatic armor upgrades also makes their Karambit warrior transition a little easier than it was before. Add in their goldless two-handed swordsmen, now also having gambazins for a bit more pure summer, and Malay you can see were improved at really every stage of the game. Despite being largely an archer or elephant sieve as their focus, there's still lots of use cases for infantry, and they're already responding, going from the second worst performer last patch to now out of the bottom 10, more than doubling their play rate at the same time. Next up for loser number 2, we have the unique tech Flemish Revolution. This tech has always been controversial, shall we say, and Burgundians were otherwise unchanged, so I wouldn't say the civilization was all that impacted as a whole, but this often discussed tech was gutted in the recent patch. The Flemish militia unit itself was nerfed in its attack, HP, armor, and if you have more than 100 villagers, the initial cost of the tech went up, given it's now based on the number of villagers you have. Burgundians have technically dropped a bit in performance on Arabia so far, though not really enough to draw any conclusions from but anyone who dislikes this tech is probably happy to see the change. Moving on, I told you we'd see them again, our number 2 winner is the Incas. This patch was great for them, leaping from basically average around a 50% win rate to top 5 now on Arabia so far, thanks to a couple of changes. First, with such a push for infantry, their slinger as an anti-infantry specialist became more useful automatically, along with gaining plus 1 attack from Andean sling as a direct buff. Second, they added a brand new discount bonus that lowers the cost of the militia line, skirmishers, and spearmen, with slingers, eagles, and kamiaks also being affected, but having some cost increases to offset this. 
While we're talking about relatively small amounts of food per unit, those advantages can add up, and it skyrocketed both their play and win rate, bringing new life to a civilization that had lost some of its identity when their infamous tower rush was taken away. Remember, this is all 1v1 data as well, and doesn't even take into account the greatly improved team bonus, helping allies get out to a nice start with a free llama. All in all, Incas are just in a really nice spot after the new changes. But now let's get to our number ones. We'll start with the biggest loser of the last patch, which is debatable, but to me, it's the Portuguese. If you look at their win rate, it's around 50% across all the current maps, which is more than respectable. But what they were really known for is for dominating on arena. If we look just at that map, it's clear they were knocked off their recently acquired throne, dropping from number one last patch with a 60% win rate to now battling for a spot in the top five. The major thing that could account for this is the organ gun overhaul, which as it looked at in depth, lost a lot of its firepower against buildings and high pierce armor enemies. The sieve is still good on closed maps and organ guns can still be scary against groups of low armor units, don't get me wrong, but they're not what they were two weeks ago and it almost feels like the end of an era. All of this though, finally brings us to the number one winner last patch. And in my opinion, that's hands down the Malians. They went from an average performing but unremarkable Civ last patch to number one on Arabia this week. Not just that, but number one as well if you include all games and ELOs combined, implying we might be entering a Malian dynasty. Two of their changes, which were more Town Center arrows from their castle unique tech and the Gabetto gaining more HP, while helpful, are probably not the main cause. Instead, this is likely fueled by a change from 30% longer lasting gold mines to 15% more gold dropped off. While the number looks like it's just cut in half, this turns into being both an early and late game bonus, as you're getting gold income faster in the early game, but also just more gold at the end of the day. Add in their already decent archers, a wood discount, more pierce armor on their infantry, and late game cavalry, including camels with extra attack, it's just hard to find a great answer to Malians. In fact, only two civilizations have a winning record against them after the first week if you include all games played so far. I wouldn't be shocked to see this bonus drop from 15% to 10% next patch if it keeps up, but both in terms of performance and their popularity, Malians so far are looking to be the number one winner. But of course, that's just my list and the civilizations that have jumped out to me so far. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.